Hi, welcome to Ramsey Rides. Uh, so maybe you clicked on this video because you've been uh, riding and your hands have been going a little bit numb and you're not sure what's going on. Or maybe you already know you have a very severe case of handlebar palsy and you want to know what the recovery time is like and how you can avoid it in the future. Or perhaps you're just playing a really long ride and you want to be take every measure you can to be preventative and uh, to make sure you don't run into any issues uh, on your, your ultra endurance ride. Um, either way, uh, if any of those sound like you, you'll find this video useful. Uh, so, hope you enjoy. So I had a very personal experience of this happening to me, um, which is what led me to do a lot of reading and research about this and uh, why I decided to make this video. Hopefully I can help you guys out because I found there wasn't a lot of stuff available online. Um, so as you can see, uh, it's snowing out, so I've been relegated to riding indoors on a trainer. And uh, I, I got really into Zwift this winter, and there was a 140 kilometer ride that I wanted to do. Um, it should take me about maybe seven hours. And uh, maybe maybe three or four hours into the ride, uh, my hands started going a bit numb. But you know, I'm indoors on a trainer, so it's not like I, I really, you know, need to be able to hold on and grip the bike super well. So I figured, you know, it's just a little bit of numbness, I'll keep riding. So I kept riding for about another four hours afterwards until I finally finished the ride. I get off the bike and I'm expecting, you know, the numbness in my hand to go back, go away after, you know, 15 minutes or so. Uh, so 15 minutes later, it doesn't feel any different. I can't really feel a couple of my fingers. Um, I'm like, oh, I'll be gone when I wake up the next morning. I wake up the next morning, still the exact same. A week later, it's still about the exact same. So I'm starting to panic and, and figure, trying to figure out what's going on. And uh, well, what happened is I developed uh, what's called uh, handlebar palsy or cyclist palsy. And what it is, is it's, uh, it's an entrapment of the uh, ulnar nerve, compression of the ulnar nerve as it goes through what's called the... Um, channel of Guyon, uh, which is right here. Uh, and then the nerve splits and it goes into your, uh, your pinky finger and your ring finger. So basically, um, for the last couple of months, I, I've had almost just tingling and haven't been able to feel these couple of fingers. Um, this was about like two and a half months ago and I'm, I'm just finally coming back. I'd say my hand's about 90% better now. But uh, so it was, it was definitely something that took me out of riding for a while and uh, I'm glad it happened in the off season. Um, so I was doing a ton of things wrong. So first of all, uh, when you're on an indoor trainer, you're really in a very static position. You're, you know, you're, you're not climbing up hills and having your friend raise, you're not going down hills, you're not standing up a lot for like rocks and technical stuff like you would on a mountain bike. Uh, I also had my mountain bike on the trainer rather than this road bike. So there's only one position for your hands. So your hands are in the same position all the time. Um, another problem I had was that I had my seat tilted a bit to uh, nose down. Um, so what that does is that it's nice because it, if, you, if you get a sore butt, it takes some of the pressure off your butt, but it puts more pressure and weight on your hands. Um, so, so that's another thing that, that uh, led to this. Um, so, so those are all things you can do to, to help avoid it is um, basically if you can get your bars up higher, you'll have less weight on your hands and you'll have more weight on your seat. Uh, and also keep your seat level instead of nose down. Uh, and of course there are some, some indoor trainers like the, like the kicker climb that will actually elevate the front wheel while you're going up hills and stuff, which just helps change the position a bit. So those are some modifications you can make to your bike to help reduce pressure on your hands by raising the bars a bit, as well as tilting your seat back a little bit as well. Uh, but there's also some behavior modifications you can make while you're on the bike and some gear modifications that will also help. Um, there's a couple interesting papers I was able to read about handlebar palsy. Um, so I'm gonna have to link those into the description. Um, one of them was looking at, uh, they had pressure sensors that would um, measure the normal force uh, on the rider's palms while they were on the bike. Um, and they tested different hand positions, so riding in the drops, riding in the hoods, and riding on the flats. And they also tested riders um, who were riding with bare hands, um, with gloves with no padding, gloves with foam padding, and gloves with gel padding. 
Um, so what they found in the study was that they found that there was the most pressure on the hands uh, when you're riding in the drops. Now that makes sense obviously because your hands are a lot lower and like I was saying having the bars higher will put less pressure on. Um, then the second uh, most, visit, most pressure um, was, in the, was in riding in the hoods uh, and then the, the least pressure was riding on the flats up, up top. Um, so obviously if you, if you are, if you aren't a road biker though, and you're a mountain biker like me, this isn't really an option you have. Um, but if you do have this option, um, the recommendation that the scientists made was actually rather than always riding on the tops though, um, it's better to move your hands around and change your position because, um, they all have varying amounts of pressure, but they put the pressure in slightly different positions. Um, regarding the gloves, so when I did my ride, stupidly, I didn't wear any gloves because I thought I'm indoors and what does it matter? Um, but uh, yeah, so even just wearing some gloves uh, without any kind of padding will help reduce the pressure a little bit. However, they also looked at um, gloves with foam padding and gel padding. Um, and they found that gloves with three millimeters of foam padding were the most effective. Um, they looked at increasing the the, the thickness of the foam padding, like up to five millimeters, but they found that there were really no more benefits uh, beyond three millimeters. Um, they also looked at gloves with gel, uh, which they found useful as well, um, but they didn't quite uh, reduce the pressure as much as foam. So these are just some gloves that I bought um, after this happened to me. Um, these are actually gel gloves, but um, as you can see, they, they have like a bit of a, a relief here, right? Where the, where, where the nerve runs and very big padding. So. Um, you know, basically any road or mountain bike gloves with padding um, like that will, will help a lot. Um, so yeah, those are, if you take all those into consideration, um, you should be able to avoid handlebar palsy. Um, it, it can be serious though, and it's not a joke. So even if, uh, it, it's very easy to ignore because it's, it's not super painful, you know, it's just a numbness. You can kind of think like, oh, it's not a big deal. But um, there's another case study I, I read um, about a female cyclist who rode across Canada and she started to have this issue nearing the beginning of her ride and she kept riding for weeks and weeks on end, uh, just basically ignoring this issue. And uh, unfortunately, um, th this, this case study was done seven years later and she still has um, limited use of these two fingers, uh, which is terrible. So. Um, it's, it's not a joke and, and it, it can get serious if you ignore it. Um, for me, I'm pretty much recovered now, but the time was about two to two and a half months um, for, my, for my hands to get, to get back to normal. Um, I just did search Reddit and everywhere I could to see like other people um, who had this and what their recovery time was. And usually it's about two to three months. That's, nerves grow very slowly. Um, so, so that's that. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully this video helped you. Um, and uh, if you found it useful and informative, please give it a like. And uh, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thanks a lot.